The year was 1876, and as its second century began, America was embracing a new pastime, one that would capture the national spirit for many generations to come, uniting young and old, rich and poor, athlete and fan. It was the game of baseball. In 1876, a young University of Minnesota was establishing its place among America's great institutions of higher learning. And in that same year, baseball became part of the university landscape. The Gophers began by playing local semi-pro clubs and eventually added other local colleges and universities to their schedule. By the 1890s, the Gophers were taking trains to faraway destinations such as Ann Arbor, Michigan, Bloomington, Indiana, and Lincoln, Nebraska. The turn of the century brought the Gophers new challenges and opportunities, such as playing in the newly formed Big Nine Conference. In 1908, Walter Wilmot took the reins as the first official coach of the Gophers. The next two decades of Gopher baseball would be marked by transition and uncertainty, with six coaching changes, the abolishment and resurrection of baseball as a conference sport, and modest results on the field. All that changed in 1931, when the baton was passed to coach Frank McCormick, who would lead the Gophers for the next 11 years. McCormick was passionate about moving Minnesota into the upper tier of what had become the Big Ten. In only two years, he took the Gophers to their first conference title and earned a second championship in 1935. McCormick was succeeded by David McMillan, who led the Gophers until 1947 a year that would begin one of the most glorious eras in all of Golden Gopher athletics. The young man from Fall River, Massachusetts had full intentions of becoming a Lutheran minister, but the lure of the diamond was greater than the pulpit, and Dick Siebert began his professional baseball career in 1932. That phase of his life, during which he was an all-star for the Philadelphia A's, lasted until 1946. He spent a year as a sportscaster with WTCN of Minneapolis before eventually making his way to the grain elevators and rail yards of Southeast Minneapolis to coach the University of Minnesota Golden Gophers. Over the course of 31 years, the Chief became a Minnesota baseball legend, helping develop the game at all levels. He is credited with introducing the aluminum bat and designated hitter to the college game. He received college baseball's highest award, the Lefty Gomez Trophy, honoring outstanding service and contribution to the sport. His teams captured 11 Big Ten titles, and he led five different Gopher teams to the College World Series, bringing home three national championships. Larger-than-life players like Paul Geel, Dave Winfield, and Paul Molitor, to name just a few, reinforced the mystique of the Seabird era. After compiling a record 754 wins, the Chief passed away in 1978. The following year, the Gophers baseball stadium was renamed Siebert Field in his honor. Upon Siebert's death, George Thomas assumed the head coaching duties for the Gophers. He took the Gophers to a 30-win season and second-place conference finish in 1980 and led the team to the championship game of the inaugural Big Ten Baseball Tournament in 1981. Then in 1982, a former Gopher player and graduate assistant by the name of John Anderson took the helm and ushered in a new era of excellence and achievement, an era that proudly continues today. Since the early 80s, the Gophers have consistently been among the elite of the Big Ten Conference with more than 1,000 wins, nine Big Ten tournament titles, eight regular season crowns, and 16 NCAA tournament appearances. In addition to these team achievements, Gopher players have continued a history of individual accomplishment as well, both on and off the field. Golden Gopher Baseball a Minnesota sports tradition grounded in commitment, excellence, and achievement. It is a program with a long, proud history. Three national championships, 29 NCAA tournament appearances, two alumni in the National Baseball Hall of Fame, three members of the American Baseball Coaches Association Hall of Fame, 23 Big Ten regular season titles, 44 All-Americans. The numbers speak for themselves.
But numbers tell only part of the story, for Golden Gopher Baseball has another more qualitative legacy, a legacy of inspiration, of deep and lasting friendships, and of preparing young athletes to succeed not only during a baseball season, but for the rest of their lives. Tonight, the deep and rich heritage of Golden Gopher Baseball is more than a memory. It is a springboard to a new era of bold dreams, hard work, and future champions. Thank you for being with us, as together we build on tradition.